there is a saying if you are not assessing you are just guessing physiotherapy is a branch of medical science that deals with diagnosis treatment and preservation of various diseases through various equipments and exercises physiotherapy independently is a drugless therapy that helps the patient to reach their potential through providing physical intervention advice and support the assessment and reassessment are critical elements for physiotherapist in determining the appropriate design and individualized treatment program assessment and diagnosis help to understand the problems your patient is suffering from and enable you to give the right treatment for a fast paced recovery hello namaste viewers welcome to our channel physio hello we are going to start video series for neurological assessment in physiotherapy and this video is about the subjective assessment solving a neurological problem can be the most fascinating exercise in your clinical setting as each problem and symptoms of the patient will appear as a diagnostic jigsaw only by developing an organized line of thought these signs and symptoms can be fitted together to form a recognizable portrait of a disease thorough understanding of anatomy and physiology is must to rearrange these jigsaw problems into something meaningful so that an appropriate therapeutic program can be designed documentation of neurological conditions include the acronym soap that is subjective objective assessment and plan soap is a widely used method that helps to guide the healthcare workers to use their clinical reasoning for assessment diagnosis and treatment of a patient based on the information provided by them subjective assessment is qualitative and it is about what patient tells us about themselves by answering the questions about their experience personal views or feelings This component is taken in detailed narrative format and describes the patient's self-report of their current status, complaint, function, activity level, disability, social history, family history, employment status, and environmental history. It also includes information from family or caregiver and medical or surgical information obtained from hospital charts. Subjective assessment helps physiotherapist to understand patient's perception of their condition and it provides a context for further assessment and treatment plan. Subjective assessment begins with patient's demographic data such as age, gender, address, occupation and sometimes the hand dominance. These information helps in better communication with the patient and understanding the demographic cause of the disease. Chief complaint or presenting problem is documented as reported by the patient this can be a symptom condition or another short statement that describes why the patient has come to the physiotherapy department example of complaint could be pain weakness tiredness loss of balance or inability to do certain day to day activity since problems can be many and all problems stated by the patient may not be significant enough the therapist must encourage the patient to state all of their problems identifying the main problem must occur to formulate a better assessment protocol and choose correct tool for evaluation for objective assessment next part of subjective assessment is history of present illness an accurate and detailed history is supremely important part of a neurological problem by the time the history is complete the therapist should be about 3 quarters or 70% of the way towards the diagnosis and if it is not the case then history must be taken again by reformulating the questions unfortunately many practitioners lacks the skill of taking accurate history and often vital facts are missed out paying particular attention to the important connecting points of the information provided by the patient is a skilled art Few of these connective points that need to be paid attention is the age of patient as age influences management of the problem more than any other factor correlation between age and the most likely diagnosis is very high for example paralysis at a younger age points more towards demyelinating disease compared to an old age where artery occlusion is the more likely cause next is understanding the clarity of symptoms Patient may present you with variety of signs and symptoms that had happened during the onset of their condition but it must be made absolutely clear what a patient means by their description of symptoms 
if a patient complains about having continuous tremor in their hand the word continuous may mean truly continuous or frequently repeated it could be during rest or while doing some action a patient with parkinson's often present with resting tremor but essential tremor occur when limb is moved and less noticeable at rest similarly the term dizziness may mean rotational vertigo or sense of instability or disturbance of vision nausea or even a full epileptic convulsion all these different symptoms point towards different location of brain so it is of utmost important to have clarity about all of them apart from understanding the meaning the next important thing to connect is mode of onset and progression of symptoms the onset of symptom can be sudden or gradual a sudden onset can be compared to a abrupt dropping of ball from hand and gradually steadily rising bounce of the ball drawing of graph can be a good way to make patient understand about sudden or gradual similarly progression of symptoms can be described as steadily worsening worsening in series of steps or relapsing and remitting the next point to consider is the chronological sequence of events a clear picture of development of disease need to be documented properly to get idea about sequence of involvement of various systems apart from that the negative information such as absence of certain symptoms is often as helpful in differentiation as positive information such as absence of radiating pain excludes the possibility of peripheralization of symptoms lastly it is important for therapists to focus on the quality and clarity of their patient's information rather than including excessive irrelevant details such as the number of hospitals the patient say they had to visit or the number of doctors they had to see acronym given in soap format to organize history of present illness is old cards where O is onset, L is location, D is duration of symptoms, C is characterization of symptoms that is how does the patient describes the symptoms, A is alleviating and aggravating factors, R stands for radiation that is whether the pain or symptom move or stay at one location, T is for temporal factor that is to know whether the symptom get worse at certain time of the day and lastly S stands for severity which can be rated on a scale of 1 to 10 the other form of histories that is included in subjective assessment are medical history pertaining to current or past medical conditions surgical history family history for hereditary ailments and social history that can be asked by using the acronym heads which stands for home and environment education employment eating activities drugs sexuality and suicide or depression here are some tips for taking history effectively start history taking with an open ended question first like what brings you to physiotherapy today or what seem to be bothering you today gradually switch to close ended questions such as does it hurt more when you sit or stand or do you feel tremor when you do activity or when at rest You can ask multiple choice questions like do you feel more tired during mornings or afternoons or after evening when you are taking history listen carefully and actively stay focused on your patient and clarify your questions when needed your attention will encourage patient to open up more and talk freely take notes and display your concern when needed while taking history of depressed or suicidal patient keep a look out for warning signs of relapse and explore the specific feeling of patient by being direct and specific talk directly about what makes them depressed and encourage them to talk freely and lastly avoid using too many of medical terminology while asking your questions and keep your words easy and simple to understand the next video of this series will be on objective assessment Stay tuned and give your feedback on the comment box. If you like today's video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.